there's a lot of talk about love and what love is. And I want to give a different slant on the meaning of love in terms that we can use it for a practical exercise in our mind. We often perceive love as a feeling that we have, which is completely accurate, towards anything or something. And there seems to be a preference, which is, again, pretty accurate in terms of what we perceive as something that we can love or something that we can reject. But sometimes we fall into the notion that there are things that we can simply not love because they are opposite of the things that we want or they are opposite of the things that makes us feel whole or makes us feel in a state of harmony. So those things we have a hard time trying to love. And it's a very valid point. It's something that I find uh, a lot of people that I talk to struggling with because there's a very real reason why they feel that way. So I want to give a different meaning to this and I first want to explain a mechanistic model of what polarity is because this will illustrate in hopefully a good way for you to see how you can perceive love in a way that is not personal and is not conditional. So unconditional love is what I'm talking about here. So we have to start with understanding that reality as we know it, perceivable reality, because it's really what we can see, perceive, feel, and try to understand, is made of polarity. Polarity meaning that there is a one side and then there's the opposite, and they both work together. This comes from the physics of magnetism, where we have a north pole and a south pole, a positive and a negative. And these, these two work together. And they seem to be in a constant uh, repulsion, because there seems to be what we see as conflict between the two. But beyond that, we can always see it also as a dance between the two because one cannot exist without the other. When we associate ourselves with one polarity, say positive polarity, we can see the negative polarity as something that is unwanted, that we are in constant rejection and we repel the negative side of whatever it is that is happening to us. An experience, an event, a situation, um, a conversation with somebody, or a notion, concepts, it could be anything. And in our minds, the way we polarize is to understand that there is another side to the way we feel. And that's where we can find issues, because our uh, reaction to it could be to repel the other and to feel that we need to uh, avoid all of that and try to have a, a, a battle against it. And we can see the world now completely divided in this. Any sort of division between humans have at their base this false idea that because polarity exists, thus conflict exists. And that is the trap that this perception of polarity brings about in the human mind. If we understand that in the middle between positive and negative, there is a union, there is a force that is being maintained by these two polar opposites that binds them together, we can now see that love resides in the middle. And if we can see that everything from matter to uh, the sun, free energy, uh, humans, animals, 
the air, everything is made of polarity, whether in the physical or in the metaphysical. We understand that this whole creation, the universe, is made out of polarity, like I said. And in the middle of everything, there is a creative principle called love. And that love is what's binding everything together. So you see, we find ourselves now in a broader view of everything. And in this broader, broader view, we have uh, a sensation that there is no true association with a positive or a negative. That is only directional in our lives. That is only telling us where we want to go. Because for beings to exist, we have to go into a direction. And there's only two directions that we have either the positive or the negative, the light or the dark. We either go up or down, left or right, front or back. Everything exists in mutual uh, work together. They both are part of the same system. And so polarity exists in its base, in its essence, to give us direction as to where we want to go. We don't have to select this. We already know it in ourselves, in our minds, in our spirit, in our soul, whichever way you want to see it. We simply know it. Intuitively, we know which direction we want. So it is not only that we can see that by direct con contrast, we can see that the negative, if you're a positive being, the negative exists so you can have a contrast in which the direction you want to go. But also to know that the center between the two is love. So there is always love in every situation because it binds together your positive experience with the negative possibility. So to illustrate this example, if somebody treats you in an unwanted way and you feel hurt by somebody, and this is a question that I get very often, how can I love the other person if it did harm to me, if it hurt me? And the answer may be that not only do you perceive and appreciate the fact that the other person hurt you because that is a direct contrast for you to appreciate love or uh, well-being or whatever sensation you want to put at the opposite of being hurt being nourished, being uh, nurtured by somebody, being cared, whatever uh, sensation, again, you want to have. Not only in that, but in the realization that for that to exist, or for you to exist, and that to obviously exist, there is a binding agent called love. And that love is really unconditional because it's not aligning with your perception of what is positive or that perception, perception of negative. It is just a neutral, all-loving principle that binds everything together. So again, not only can you perceive the necessity of the other polar opposite of your direction to exist for you to have a direction, but also to appreciate that which binds the two together so you can really, really appreciate what's called unconditional love.